Well, hello, I'm here with Lindsay Turner, Program Services Director, and Lizeth Quandon, Volunteer Coordinator for Voices of Hope. Voices of Hope are the Share the Plate recipient for us for November of 2021, and we're happy to have you here with us. Yeah, we're happy to be here. Do you want to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit more about maybe how you got into the work and um, a little bit more about the mission of Voices of Hope? Yeah, um, so I'm Lindsay Turner. I'm the Program Services Director. I've been here for um, just, just now five years. And, you know, I my background really is in child welfare, um, juvenile mental health. Um, and so I kind of fell into this line of work, but always realized that advocacy was actually behind um, everything that I've done and, and kind of fought for. And um, I was in the children's services coordinator role um, until the last um, six months or so. And so I worked a lot with um, CPS, child welfare, juvenile court, um, and in that system. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I'm Lizette, I'm volunteer coordinator, and actually it's a recent change for me. Um, I have been at Voices of Hope for eight years, and um, throughout those eight years, I've been the bilingual advocate, so I primarily have worked with um, clients who their primary language is Spanish. Um, with that, I offer a Spanish support group, um, and within, I want to say, oh, is it going to be six months? five months I've transitioned to volunteer coordinator so that's kind of what my role is now great so I'm assuming you probably still do a little bit of the uh, bilingual support as well mm -hmm. yes I still continue to do that we are in the process of hiring a bilingual advocate we have um, one other member who also um, is able to speak Spanish but yes I'm still um, involved in seeing my regular clients and support groups great so with volunteer coordination, um, what uh, kinds of volunteer positions do you have? Yeah, they um, kind of vary throughout the year of what um, is needed. It has looked very different with COVID, um, but our goal is for this 2022 um, for us to offer three trainings in the year. Um, one will be held in January, um, the other one in May, and then in September. Um, so our trainings um, are for those who want to get involved in this line of work. Um, so it is open to community members. Um, um, as well as students who want to do an internship with us. And do I understand correctly that sometimes if you are um, well versed in the training and you know you make it through the training successfully, I guess, um, do I understand that some of those folks then are helping with like the hotline? Yes. Yeah. So it is a 34 hour training. Um, it is a intense. Uh, we talk about a lot of uh, topics. Um, and yes, with that, we do have a 24-hour crisis line that operates. Um, actually, I was recently doing some math and last year, fiscal year, um, our volunteers covered 70% of the hours needed through that crisis line. Wow. Um, so we are always in need of volunteers mm -hmm. and we really appreciate them. Great. Yeah, I have known several people over the years who have either worked there or volunteered there. And um, I understand that it, it can be really rewarding, but also really difficult. And so I understand um, why the training is as extensive as it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's both rewarding. Um, it's challenging and rewarding, though, you know, and I think that's what makes Voices of Hope so special is that we have um, everybody that's employed here is all they're all doing direct services as well. So we're all a part of that crisis line and taking walk ins, um, doing our staff on call rotations. But then we're also doing like Lizeth is also coordinating um, volunteer training and working with our volunteers and and other people are doing different systems, advocacy and outreach and things like that. And so we're we're all doing the direct services work. Mm -hmm. as well as big systems advocacy and things like that. So I think, I think that's the special thing about Voices of Hope. Sure. Um, I think a lot of our members and friends are familiar with Voices, but um, will you please just tell us a little bit more um, as a, the basics, like the mission and, and who you serve? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our mission, it, you know, it's really twofold. So it's Vice of Hope is a crisis center for domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, trafficking, and other forms of violence. Um, so twofold, we, we do that 24 hour, seven days a week crisis intervention through our through our crisis line that Lizeth mentioned. We also do 24 hour advocacy to the hospitals in town. And so that's with any sexual assault or domestic assault that comes in. Um, and so that's part of our mission. And then the other part is really, we're, you know, we're really looking at changing that culture around violence against women and gender-based violence. Um, and we do that with education and training, as well as just, we're really, it's important to form partnerships in our community. And so we're learning from, you know, law enforcement or our legal partners and things like that, but they're also learning from us on how to do their work and be DV informed as well. And so that's really, that's our mission. Um, you know, the, the people who we serve are survivors, um, but also their families and their supports. And so a lot of times we get calls from parents or, or friends that say, hey, this is what's going on with um, my sister and I, I just don't know how to help her. And, and so we, we will support them as well, walking through, through that with their, their loved one as well. Awesome. Do I understand that you also have um, some support groups that meet regularly? Yeah, again, COVID, COVID's so silly. <laughs> so we do, we have our domestic violence support group and sexual trauma support groups. And those are still meeting by Zoom, hoping that maybe after the first of the year, we can get those back in person. Um, we do have a, our DV 101, it's an educational group. Um, it's really, it's, it's educational. And so we, we really we talk about the tactics of domestic violence, why she doesn't leave, <laughs> different things like that. And then there's a really strong parenting component. And so how witnessing violence affects kids, how to kind of parent post-separation with a batterer, um, things like that trauma and how that impacts um, the brain and coping and things like that. Uh, we have our bilingual group as well. And we also have a, an economic empowerment group. Um, mm -hmm. And that's an educational based group. And that is being held. Jamie's kind of doing those ones one on one <laughs> right now. So all of our groups kind of look um, a little bit different right now. But, you know, I, I, I'm hopeful that after the first of the year, I think we can get those back in person. Are you trying to wait till the dial is down in the green again or? You know, I think we were, we were in person until it went into the orange. So we were waiting until it was in yellow, but now that it's in yellow, we're hitting that holiday time. <laughs> and we, I think Lizeth can talk a little bit more, um, but typically we do um, where we kind of a holiday drive where mm -hmm. we try to match, um, we try to match clients with donors and somebody that would want to like adopt a family, I mm -hmm. suppose, for the holidays and hook them up with some, some stuff that they need. So it gets to be a very busy time <laughs> around sure. places of hope. And, and so we thought that in this, this period of time might be a good time to just kind of keep with the zoom groups for now and um, start, start fresh first of the year. Sure. Do you want to talk about a little bit about a little bit, Lizeth, how that'll look this year? Yeah, um, we're still kind of in the works, um, but I feel we're going to kind of keep the same thing as we did uh, last year, uh, which was a learning experience for all of us. Um, but um, kind of what um, Lindsay mentioned, I mean, we don't have a lot of space. Um, we are, the space that we have is for client access. So um, the group, the groups where they would be held, that is the kind of our main workshop area where that will be taking place that's kind of the reason why groups are still going to be via zoom um but yeah we have we it's a coordination to have um either community members or agencies in the community who adopt either a group a family um and then we kind of coordinate that um for delivery and and pick up um it's around the season and I believe right now Kendra um, another advocate here is the one that will be taking over that um, she is looking into doing a food drive I don't have the details yet because I think with COVID we have to be careful about that because we care about our community as well we don't want you know people to be 
exposed and, and I know they want to get out of, you know, and do something and give back because our families are very much in need and really appreciate um, being able to provide the gifts that their kids want. Um, I think last year we had a little bit more of a focus on gift cards um, to be able to help. Okay. Um, you know, electricity, rent, mm -hmm. things like that, that were uh, a higher priority priority than usual um, because yeah. of COVID. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we're still in the works in, in how that's going to look like, but I, I find it that's going to be very similar or a combination of past years and last year um, with being able to give the kids what, you know, they're eager to get, um, mm -hmm. but also help the, the moms or um, the caring parent um, and the needs of, of what's needed in the home. Yeah. Yeah. I remember last year um, it, it was all new. Everything was new for the first time we had to deal with all those things. So yeah. it's been a roller coaster, hasn't it? <laughs> yes, it has. Mm -hmm. And some of us thought it would be done by now. So we're all a little bit kind of, exactly. I don't know, frustrated, as you said, going into the holidays. But um, I will say that um, I know that there will be folks here that will want to know more about um, that all of that as it comes together. So if you can keep me on the uh, radar, um, I will definitely share that kind of detail um, with folks throughout the month um, in November as things kind of come together. Yeah. Um, one thing I don't want to let slip by me also um, is that you mentioned gender-based violence, and I am aware that the majority of the people that you um, serve our women and children, but there is also gender-based violence with men in our community. And I just wondered what, um, what kind of percentages that looks like, or if, if that's really a part of your, um, base of who you serve as well. Uh, absolutely. Yes. So, I mean, we serve all genders. I think there's, um, I, you know, I think there's some really specific barriers with men seeking help as well. But I do think I don't have the specific numbers, but I, I mean, I, I feel like we have seen a lot more men recently. And the more that um, the community is educated and um, I, I, I have seen some more men reaching out um, and then, you know, also just non-binary as well and, and transgender. I mean, we're going to serve anybody that walks in our doors. Um we, you know, statistically it's 90% is violence against women. Um, and, and so, yeah, I mean, our numbers are gonna reflect that. I, I want to break down those barriers though for men to come in and get some Absolutely. help because we recognize that this is not just, it's not just women that are being victimized in these ways. Um, but yeah, I mean, our numbers still really do reflect that the vast majority is women that are seeking those services. Yes. And thank you for um, lifting up uh, non-binary and transgender folks too, because of course, you know, that is really important that we have um, the ability to serve those portions of our population as well. And, and, um, and frankly, it's becoming more common. Um, uh, younger people, for example, are um, embracing, um, you know, the the non-binary um, aspects of our, our spectrum, you know, even more than ever. And so the fact that y'all have embraced that and are able to um, sort of encompass everyone in your mission is wonderful. Yeah, um, absolutely. I wanted to add, we do have male staff and also um, volunteers to the crisis line that are male as well. So um, I, right. we get our regulars and I think that has helped to to build that trust and, and um, help them be able to speak out about these issues and seek the help that they need. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, prior to COVID too, we were offering a male support group. Um, and you know, we were, we were just really having a lot of trouble with getting people to attend, you know, and I, I think there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of barriers there, yeah. um, but offering it was the first step, you know, and, and continuing to offer it again, COVID kind of played into that, but our hope is to get that going again. And um, we're really hoping to have an LGBTQ plus group as well. <laughs> I mean, right. lots, of, lots of things that we would, we really want to get 
get going again once things are back to normal <laughs> right it's yeah whatever that looks like <laughs> exactly for sure um well is there anything else you'd like to share about um things that are coming up in the near future i think it sounds to me like um you kind of have your hands full just sort of getting back to a sense of normal and um getting back to uh, being able to have the in-person support groups and getting the volunteer um connections happening with the um adopted families and that i mean that that sounds like enough to do in the next couple of months but yeah and you know we still offer our walk-in hours um they're they're shorter than they used to be and we're hoping to maybe be able to expand those again in january too um but yeah so we're we're still doing all of that face-to-face -face work that we've always done working with the systems um i um Darn it, I forgot what I was gonna say. We I was gonna mention the coat drive though. Did yes, you want I to actually have that in my <laughs> notes. Um yeah, so I mentioned Kendra earlier. So she um is doing a coat drive currently um for uh our families. Um, I believe on our Facebook, we do have a post about that. Okay. Um it's a warm clothing drive. Um it gets a little bit we get teenagers don't wear regular <laughs> child sizes. So we do accept uh, adult sizes, a male adult sizes for um, our, our youth that are needed. So um, anything that is gently used or new, uh, coats, hats, um, gloves, uh, things like that, um, as well as like, we have received in the past year some blankets um, that we are able to provide to families, especially when they're traveling, fleeing domestic violence, um, or whatever that looks like. Um, those are things that are always needed during this time. Is that through the end of the year or just in November? Um, that's a good question. I think usually it's throughout the year right November I mean during the cold season and mm -hmm. they're always welcome because they're okay. always in. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it is something that we open during this time because of the need it mm -hmm. looks very different throughout the rest of the year because we don't have a lot of room and storage for that mm -hmm. okay um, right now we really open our um, doors to receiving those things and I believe um, because of COVID we've needed to um, put a um, barrel outside so um, we might look into maybe having other options of other locations throughout um, Lincoln where those could be collected and then we could bring them back to the agency and to clients. Okay, great. Um, the only other thing I can think of that I wonder about is I believe this is true that in the past we have um, also donated toys. Do you have some kind of a grandparents room or is that part of the adopting the family thing? Have you incorporated it into that? Yeah, so it would be a part of the adopting. Um, so with with the adoption, there's there are always going to be families. So if we if if we end um, the adoption date to be say like December eleventh, we're going to have lots of families come between December eleventh right. and December twenty fifth, right? And so we also just ask for general donations like that so okay. that we can still help those families that maybe miss that deadline for to be adopted necessarily. So um, we, we still would take any just kind of generic. It wouldn't necessarily be that specific child's wish list item, but it would be something that we could help with. So more along the lines of toys, games, and gift cards, right? Yes. Um, you know, I think just talking with our clients, I, they feel more, more empowered to be able to go shopping for their children themselves. You know, they might sure. not have financial needs to do that, but, um, being able to purchase that gift with a gift card and then giving that, you know, to their kiddo, I think is, is empowering for them. And so, um, that's why we really, we push the gift cards. Um, Makes sense. and, and, you know, I think, yeah, I think that we're going to be responding up until, you know, Christmas Day sometimes. And we, we've definitely had situations where they had the presents and for a million different reasons, they're no longer there. <laughs> so right. maybe they've had to flee or maybe they were destroyed and, you know, and so we're going to be responding up until Christmas Day and, and beyond. <laughs> so we, we do need those things just on hand as well. Okay. You know, we we kind of stockpile them too for birthdays and things like that. Yeah. So I was we, gonna mention that that it, yeah. I think gets tricky when 
comes January, those birthdays start coming along and mm -hmm. they're already pretty tight on their resources and wanting to make sure kids have that special day. So mm -hmm. um, those are always welcome as well. Yeah. Great. Well, I really appreciate your time today. I appreciate you being with us and, and telling us more about um, the work that you're doing. Thank you for everything that you do for the vulnerable in our communities and for you know doing everything you can to, to raise the bar with education pieces as well. It's really important work that you're doing. Awesome. Well, thank you for having yes. us. We appreciate it. You bet. Take care.